Good morning dear students, I am Dr. Ankita Shah and today I will demonstrate the cerebellum. The cerebellum is the largest part of the hind brain. Considering the whole brain, it is the second largest part. The cerebellum is located in the posterior cranial fossa. To look at the cerebellum, this is the sagittal section of the head region. This is the sagittal section of the cerebellum. It is located behind the pons and the medulla and in between them lies the fourth ventricle. This is the cavity of the fourth ventricle. Superiorly, it is separated from rest of the brain by the tentorium cerebelli. This is the tentorium cerebelli. Posterior inferiorly, it is related to the squamous part of the occipital bone. The cerebellum surface just like the cerebrum to increase the surface area has many fissures as well as folia. In the cerebrum there was presence of the sulci and the gyri. In the cerebellum there is presence of fissures and folia. Why folia? Because it looks like leaf. This arrangement is known as arbor vitae cerebelli. This is because in the cortex there is presence of grey matter and in the medullary core there is presence of white matter. The white matter extends like branches of tree into the central axis of the folium and represents the arbor vitae cerebelli or the tree of life. This can also be seen very clearly in this sagittal section of the brain. This is the arbor vitae cerebelli. From the medullary cord, the white matter is extending into the folium. These are the folium. And this represents like the branches of tree. So, let us look at the relation here again. This is the cavity of the fourth ventricle anteriorly separating the cerebellum from the pons and the medulla which are part of the brain stem. Now, let us look at the viscera. This is the viscera of the cerebellum along with the brain stem. Here you can see the surface is marked by numerous fissures and in between the fissures there is leaf like folia. This is the folia and in between them there are numerous fissures. The cerebellum consists of two cerebellar hemispheres and connected by a midline vermis. The vermis when seen from the upper aspect, this is the superior vermis. When seen from lower aspect, this is the inferior vermis. Characteristic of superior vermis is that it is ridge like and it is continuous with the superior surface of both the cerebellar hemispheres. Characteristic of inferior vermis is that it is situated in the vallecula which is a groove like depression which separates both the cerebellar hemispheres from the inferior vermis. So, on the superior surface, the superior vermis is continuous. On the inferior surface, the inferior vermis is well demarcated from both the cerebellar hemispheres. So, we can see it has two surfaces, one is the superior and one is the inferior surface. It also presents two notch, one is anteriorly and one is posteriorly. Anteriorly, this is the anterior cerebellar notch. Due to the presence of the brain stem, it cannot be visualized clearly, but the anterior cerebellar notch is wider and shallower. The posterior cerebellar notch, this is the posterior cerebellar notch, which is narrow and deep. The posterior cerebellar notch gives attachment to the uh, fat cerebelli. Coming to the surfaces, there are numerous fissures, but some of the fissures are very much well marked. On the superior surface, at the junction of anterior two-third and posterior one-third, there is presence of fissura prima. This is the fissura prima. This fissura prima separates the cerebellar hemisphere into anterior lobe and posterior lobe. The next prominent fissure is the horizontal fissure. This is the horizontal fissure. You can look here closely. 
this is the horizontal fissure. The horizontal fissure, I have kept my forcep on the horizontal fissure, divides the cerebellar hemisphere into superior surface and inferior surface. The next fissure is the posterior lateral fissure. Coming to the inferior surface, this is the flocculus. In between the flocculus and rest of the cerebellum where I have kept my forcep, this is the posterior lateral fissure. So, what are the fissures present here? On the superior surface, fissura prima. In between the superior surface and inferior surface, the transverse fissure. In between flocculus, this is the flocculus and rest of the cerebellum, there is a posterior lateral fissure. Coming to anatomical subdivision of lobes, there is anterior lobe, posterior lobe and flocculonodular lobe. Rostral to fissura prima is the anterior lobe. This whole part is the anterior lobe. Caudal to fissura prima is the posterior lobe. The posterior lobe extends from superior surface to inferior surface. Up to what extent? Up to the posterior lateral fissure. It is the largest of the wall. So, uh, posterior lobe extending between the fissura prima and the posterior lateral fissure. Rostral to the horizontal fissure, this is the superior surface of the posterior lobe. Caudal to it, this is the inferior surface of the posterior lobe. And the smallest lobe is the flocculonodular lobe. This is the flocculonodular lobe. From the flocculus, the pedicle extends up to the nodule, which is the part of the inferior vermis. Now, how to know the anatomical position? For the anatomical position, we need to identify the superior surface and inferior surface first. To identify the superior surface, the superior vermis is continuous with the superior surface of both the cerebellar hemispheres. Another point, in the brain stem, the cut section of the midbrain will come above, the medulla will come below. On the inferior surface, there is presence of the inferior vermis which is located in situ in the vallecular which is a gutter like depression and well demarcated from both the cerebellar hemisphere. How to know anterior and posterior end? Anteriorly there is the wider and shallow anterior cerebellar notch lodging the brain stem. Posteriorly there is the shallow posterior cerebellar notch lodging the fab cerebelli. Now, these were the main anatomical parts. Now, we will come to individual lobes with the help of the schematic diagram. Now, look at this diagram. In front of the fissura prima is the anterior lobe. The anterior lobe vermis part includes the lingula, central lobule and culmen. The lingula does not extend laterally into the cerebral hemisphere. Central lobule extends laterally to form the ala. Culmen extends laterally to form the quadrate lobule. In front of the horizontal fissure, there is the superior part of the posterior lobe and Behind the horizontal fissure, there is the inferior part of the posterior lobe. The posterior lobe consists of declive, folium, tuber, pyramid, uvula. Declive extends laterally to form lobular simplex. Folium extends laterally to form superior semilunar lobule. Tuber extends laterally to form inferior semilunar lobule. Pyramid give rise to biventral lobule and uvula give rise to tonsil. This is the nodule part of the vermis which is extending to form the flocculus. Let us look at the viscera, this important structures and then we will go back to the diagram. In this viscera, this is the superior vermis. This is the fissura prima, so this is the anterior lobe. Among the superior vermis, this is the lingula, 
which is not giving rise to any of the lobe laterally. This is the lingular part. Behind the fissura prima, this is the posterior lobe. Posterior lobe rostral to the horizontal fissure is the superior part. Behind it is the inferior part. It extends up to the posterolateral fissure. This is the inferior vermis and this is the tonsil. This part is the tonsil of the cerebellum. Behind the posterolateral fissure, this is the flocculus, which is the extension of the nodule part of the vermis. Now let us come back to the diagram. Developmentally, it can be morphologically classified into archicerebellum, paleocerebellum and neocerebellum. Archicerebellum is the oldest one. It includes the lingula, nodule and flocculus. The paleocerebellum is later developed. It includes the anterior lobe except the lingula and in the inferior vermis it includes the pyramid and evula. The neocerebellum is the newest one. It includes the largest lobe that is the posterior lobe except the pyramid and uvula. The main function of the cerebellum is to maintain the muscle tone, equilibrium, posture and for coordinated movements. The function of the archicerebellum is that it will help to maintain the posture, tone, equilibrium of the trunk muscles. The function of paleocerebellum is to maintain the posture, tone, equilibrium and also crude movements of the limbs. And the function of neocerebellum is for smooth performance of skillful activities. Now let us summarize the viscera. So this is the cerebellum located in the posterior cranial fossa related anteriorly with the fourth ventricle, the pons and the medulla superiorly with the tentorium cerebelli and posterior inferiorly with the squamous part of the occipital bone. Looking at the viscera, to know the anatomical position, superior surface has to be identified by identifying the continuation of the superior vermis with the superior surface of the cerebellar hemisphere. Well demarcation of the inferior vermis from the cerebellar hemisphere by the presence of the vallecula. Anteriorly there is the anterior cerebellar notch and posteriorly there is narrow and deep posterior cerebellar notch. We can also use the attachment if the attachment of the brainstem is there. The midbrain is the upper end and the medulla is the lower end. So, that's all regarding the viscera of the cerebellum. Thank you.